Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. I'm uh, glad to say I'm joined by two of our regular guests here. We, of course, have the Drakester. Barry Drake was uh, not in y'all over the weekend. He was doing a tour of uh, Munster. I believe he played a couple of rounds of golf, but I know, judging by his Twitter feed on Saturday night, he was also at Clonmel over the weekend. But I've been well informed that he's uh, caught up in all the racing. He was keeping abreast of everything as it went on live on the evening. And Declan O'Donoghue, who I know, was a child from Park on Saturday night and Declan by all accounts it was a pleasure to be there it was a great night's racing beforehand it looked like it was going to be a great night's racing and it certainly didn't disappoint even outside the competitions which were incredible the, the, other, you know, the other couple of races were, were, were superb it was just one of those nights where everything clicked and you had a, a bit of a crowd back it was nice to hear winners being, being cheered home again and, and so on and so forth with bookmakers present so we're, we're getting there you know, yeah, we, certainly, back, but we're getting there. Yeah. we certainly are getting there. Of course, this podcast uh, today is titled Talking Corn Cucullin, and indeed that's what we will be doing. But we'll also give plenty of notice uh, for the Shelburne Champion 550, some fine displays in that. We'll take a look at the action from the provincial tracks. The Treaty Cup was at Limerick on Saturday. Of course, we saw some sensational displays from the youngsters down at Curraheen Park on Saturday. I'm sure Barry was kicking himself. He missed that, although he was probably hock deep in a pint or two down in Clonmel. And of course, a very successful night in Toaster on Saturday night for the Irish, both in the English Derby and the English Derby plays. Long may it continue. We have eight semi-finalists. But let's start, gentlemen, with the Corn Coo Cullen. I think it's no surprise to anyone that I am more than happy to start talking about the stairs because I love them. I would have 12 stain races every night if I could. Um, and it didn't disappoint, as I've said earlier on. Declan, from start to finish, we had some unbelievable finishes, some brilliant performances. It was just a cracking stake. It was. I, I agree with you. Margin racing is very popular in, in Dublin and always has been, always. And I would say this is next to the Derby and, and the 600. Uh, this is in, in, in the public affection and so on. It was great to have people back to be able to see it. Uh, fantastic racing. It's wide open. I wouldn't like to pick a winner, but at this stage, <laughs> you know, there really is... is um, Paul Hennessy is a very strong team. Liam Downing is a very strong team. That's enough to, to be going along with. But there are other, other dogs. There, there, there's a few quiet ones there that, that I impressed on, on Saturday night. So it, it, it is wide open. We got into action straight away. Priceless Jet is a great dog, as we know, a very genuine dog. But he can make life hard on himself. But I think this 750 on the outside box, he gets a clear run, uh, trap six. This is ideal for him. And he, he, he took full advantage. I didn't understand quite how Droopy Dwight was, was odds on favourite against him. I didn't quite get that, to be honest with you. Uh, he ran very well, too. And um, Cricket Wicket, who's one of these improving stars that could just do anything, got home and toured. But you would be impressed by, by Priceless Jet. For a dog just back from the English Derby, very good decision of Paul Hennessy to put himself and Boy Sports Bingo in, in, into the Concrete Column. That proved inspired on your way home being to, to come up with that and they are absolutely, two of them are driving it. Yeah, they're funny enough. You know, a lot of people are very slow to put dogs over six bends and Paul has been guilty of it every now and again. We will get to that a little bit later on because there was one later on. He should have been over yeah. six bends a lot earlier. And, but and, Prices Jet and Boy Sports Bingo in particular, the confidence of getting a clear run, getting room to race could stand to them when they step back to four bends later in the year deck and I think there's no doubt about that but Price's Jet you know Droopy's Wyatt led up the inside Price's Jet joined him on the corner bumped a little bit past in the stands but the pure power and pace of Price's Jet was evident to all to see like Droopy's Wyatt is an extremely fast greyhound over four bends and six bends and yeah. Price's Jet left him standing to that third bend that, that original point you made there is, is a very good one and Paul knows it better than most because they, they show didn't win a race and he went over 750 and, and that opened him up, you know. Prices said, yeah, Droopy's wife ran very well too but Prices, on, on the, you know, he, the race went his way and that, that's because he was very good and he deserved it. Uh, Droopy's let out but once Prices, going by the stands, once Prices took over, and uh, he, he he absolutely no problem getting the trip. Neither of them have actually, to, to, to be fair. Very, very good race. Got the got the ball rolling well. And well done to pick the wicket. Don O'Neill get getting in in, in, in third as well. Because it was yeah. a tough enough heat. I was talking to someone after racing and the one dog that they said to me they liked in the opening round of the current column was cricket wicket. She well, stood up a bit, stood up a bit at the fifth bend, but you really stayed on yeah, stage. Yeah, she'll yeah, win, yeah. she'll win plenty of races. Good, yeah. Barry from the uh, from the outside looking in. 
good racing in Shelburne Park. Um, this opening heat, prices jet. You know plenty about him. It was just a case of when he got loose, he was going to put the pace to the race. I think he can go up faster. Definitely, yeah. And just an interesting point that you touched on there about grounds improving for, for the step up to um, 750 yards when, when they came back um, to the standard distances of, of 5 to 5, 5.50. Uh, Beach Avenue, another prime example there um, of a ground who, who left his previous form well behind when he, he stepped up to 7.50. And I remember speaking to Paul Hennessy below Carrie Park one night and he thought that the, uh, the couple of runs over the 7.50 were the makings of the ground. So, um, that, that's certainly very interesting. And as you said, look, what a way to, to get the competition um, up and running in the opening heat, uh, one of the races of the weekend. I thought Priceless Jet had a lot to do when he failed to skip around the opening turns in front. And he had to battle hard to get to the front. And once he did, in fairness, it, it never looked like he was going to get caught. And as you said, I think in your commentary, he was in front all the way to the drop. So, yeah, fabulous performance from Priceless Jet. And uh, Troop is right, running very well in second as well. Yeah, good point about Beach Avenue. And I put you another one. Ballymac Kingdom, you know, he was sort of a nearly dog in his early part of his career when they stepped up with the six bends. Confidence sort of arrived. And I think confidence is understated at times, Declan. I think Greyhounds need it. Yeah, he he, he took off. And very often it's the first time they're, they're behind the bunny. They're the first one behind the bunny and the first time they've been in front. And, and they kind of like it. So definitely, it, it keeps working. Uh, we are talking all the time about top class dogs here. Whether that would apply to your average grader, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but certainly with, with the top yeah. dog, <laughs> there's no does. point. Yeah. There's no point in putting a, a, like a, an S4 sprinter into it and hoping that it turns into a fly machine. Is what you're saying? Uh, yeah, absolutely. But but uh, whether average dogs six pens would 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 find some of them out anyway. They they get fed up with it and and so on and so forth. But with, with the good dogs, they absolutely love it. And prices, Jet, like we, you keep finding out about them. Paul keeps finding out about them, and you know possibly he could go even further. On, on, on this showing but equally as you say he could be more effective when he drops back yeah his breeder of course Tommy O'Donovan always said he was going to be a 2021 dog that that seems to be coming true he, he's very much seemed, the penny seems to have dropped him very much, on to the very second much. season Paul Hennessy looked like he was going to complete a double for 747 and a half yards just in the last couple of yards Bally McWisdom got to him uh, it was another tremendous contest this was perhaps the finish of the night uh, Bally McWisdom just she made up so much ground in those last 10 strides Declan but she got there and um, it was almost a carbon copy of their meeting the previous this week they've gone faster they've gone almost two lengths faster and this time Ballymac Wisdom got there well I, I mentioned the betting in the first heat but this, the betting in this heat was crazy I had to look at it a couple of times Ballymac Wisdom was one to two and Boys Force Finger was five to two you know yeah. which makes up he saw the week before there's nothing between them it was an even evens each of two type race absolutely, you know, right, yeah. absolutely and they're two toppers and they both ran brilliant and it was a short head did, did this time yeah boy sports bingo uh, Paul would, would be delighted he put him over 750 and he'd also be kind of wondering why didn't I do it before <laughs> but he didn't look the kind of dog I don't we, we all wonder about boy sports bingo and he's really improved this year you know but I don't think any of us saw him going over six bands I, I think Paul was that, that was a Pretty good insight there. You I, know, I, I tell know. you one thing. Whatever about when I saw prices, Jeff, you know, I raised an eyebrow. Yeah, Boyle's Sports Bingo was a bit of a shock to me, but Absolutely. he's such a natural starter. He's always been a good trapper. It gets a bit outpaced in the bend sometimes, but when they get loose, and we know he's very strong, but I didn't think we were seven fifty yards strong. But he's doing forty one sixty, you know, on the night, you know, forty one fifty nine on the card officially. You know, that'll win. That'll win ninety nine percent of seven fifties around Shelburne Park. Absolutely, and and but of course, in Ballymac Wisdom, he's taken on something special, something very special, and it was a great finish. And uh, they'll be just as tight every time they meet it, be just as, as as close, I would think. You know, you were watching this on the screen in Clonmel, Barry, were you? Uh, it was a great finish. Did you think Ballymac Wisdom had got up? She was in the inside. No, it was actually Friday night. I was in uh, Clanmel, so um, oh, I was watching the replays on, on Sunday morning. But uh, what an advertisement once again uh, for for seeing. Uh, races, you know, Benny Mac Wisdom 41 40 um, around course and distance. So it was no surprise to, to see it win. But uh, Boyle Sports Bingo is a ground that can go a very long way in this competition, especially with them uh, great front running tactics. And if he can keep uh, bouncing over the front like that, he's going to be a leading player. But look, I think, um, you know, the, the English Ground Derby uh, form is standing up um, here. No surprise to see that. And that a couple of these grounds, I suppose, were, were knocked out at the right time um, to take in this competition. So you know, it's it, it's going to take some winning, um, as as you pointed out at the start. But you know, so a little between all the heat winners. 
Yeah, good point you make there. You know, you don't you don't think about it, but Priceless Jet was in the English Derby, held the record at Toaster for a while. Boyle Sports Bingo had been there. Ballymac Bisdom was there. Later on, we saw Ballymac Kingdom. Um, he only went out last week in the third round of the English Derby, despite showing loads of pace. Just want to give AK-47 a mention there for Pat Guilfoyle, Sean Burke, and of course, Alan Kelly, AK-47 himself. Uh, Declan, she didn't run too bad. She didn't get involved early, but she did stay on well. She's doing 4180 with a better start. She's certainly capable of going faster. Absolutely. I mean, she she, she was in a, in a, in a, in a red-hot heat against two who'd been over the track and trip the previous Saturday. You know what I mean? So, so yeah, it was, it was a big, big ask. She's only beaten, I think, three lengths uh, in, in the end, and this could be her trip. This could definitely be, be, be her trip. But at this level, against these dogs, she would want to be coming away a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, for, to win it out right? but she could keep improving and, yeah just one nice this is arrow as we saw her hit the lids and go to the front not in most of the rounds but she can probably pace up better than she did the other night it's just yeah, one to keep yeah. in mind I suppose certainly the draw was in her good. favour he good, three yeah. he three we mentioned about Paul Hennessy and uh, you know he, he's not all that slow generally about putting them over six bends but battle cry I I I, I feel somewhat justified and uh, you know we needed that we need I did. I've been screaming about this one over 750 for about a year and a half. Um, it only happened the back end of last year. It never really then happened for her. She got trouble and she just didn't seem to be at her best at the time. I think if she'd been put over 750 in her pump, I think this one would have been an absolute sensational tracker. But the other night, she did everything right, decked and fast away, met every inch, 4176. It may have been the slowest heat winner, but when you consider the Ballymac Wisdom with the fastest with 4158, the winners were so condensed in terms of time. Like she's only, what, two and a half lengths behind Ballymac Wisdom on the clock. It was a fine run by Battle Cry, but I dare say we might do plenty of chat about the runner up too. She was unbelievably eye catching. Yeah, as I say, it's one of these strange races where we had a very deserving winner and a very unlucky loser. Mm. You know, and that, that is what, what happened here. Battle kind of, I agree with you, how she was still racing over 525 for, for so long was, was one of the great mysteries of our age. Of Paul, our Paul, if, Paul, if you're watching this, you, and, you know my thoughts on the matter. We're not trying to drive the nail in, well, okay? I, 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 I was writing it every week, so there you go. But I mean, she and in saying that, she's still a top class over 525 and she's still running the big competitions and, and she's doing well in them. The, the, what's actually mystified me is I've never seen over middle distances, which, which I, I don't quite I understand but uh, anyway whatever she's top class she ran brilliant she, she deserved to win she went in 41.76 isn't a bad clock at all for one who's still relatively new to, 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 to six bender racing and she, she'd easily if she pushed out she'd easily improve a couple of lengths on, on, on the clock there I wouldn't worry about that at all uh, Buckles Brandy um, uh, formerly <laughs> of another name of another parish uh, very impressive I have to say because she was right up there early you know and she uh, she got trouble and then she stumbled and then she was out with Basie. You, you, you basically said that's it. And yet she came back and was only beaten at length. It was a top class performance from, from her. And, um, you know, they, they are two of, of the potential winners. I, yeah. I would think there. When, when both, you see, both will improve for it. When you see something doing 41.20 around Curry Heen, uh, she did it twice, 41.31, 41.37. Your instinct is, oh, she's a real speedster that gets the 750. I put it to you, Barry, that she's very strong and she has enough pace to do that sort of a clock. Tactical speed in the opening 150 yards may well be her problem going forward, but I dare say they'll find the right trip for her, the right tracks. Um, if she goes to the UK, which is very likely, um, she could mop up over, you know, an easy eight bends, even a strong eight bends in time. She she looks a potentially very, very special stare. Yeah, she, she has it all, doesn't she? Um, I was actually watching the races on, on Sunday morning. I didn't realise when I was watching the races that it was actually um, Silver Hill, Karen Hillay, and a bit of research and, and clicked on the Bacos Brandy. But it didn't um, take page. much research now, in fairness. <laughs> <laughs> to see who it was, but that was it. An unbelievable performance in the feet. She was such a, an eye catcher in fairness. And uh, you know, there'll be big days ahead for her, I'm sure. In terms of the winner then battle cry, great to see her return to form. She had been slightly disappointing of late. She had a, a couple of good opportunities in, in recent times and, and she failed to take them. But I think that was her first win now in the fourth attempt over 750. And, and she 750 hour trip and she even went off two to five after all you're singing uh, on her first attempt over the 750. 
So don't yeah, have to, you don't have to tell me, <laughs> you, Mary. You needed that one, Ian. You needed that one. Yeah, we certainly did. Anyway, it's great to see her winning. You know, she's nearly four years of age, but she still she still has an engine. And um, just getting back to Bacco's brandy there for a moment. Um, I was going to say something, and it's completely escaped me. Um, <laughs> Oh, yeah. As the competition hots up, Declan, um, she may well be suited by the fact that there's quite a few four-bend greyhounds stepping up and trip that are, are likely to go up fast, set a strong gallop. She can, if she doesn't hit the lid, sit in behind them. And in, in those circumstances, probably she would be much closer into the back straight than she was the other night. Yeah, yeah. but she, like, like you must remember, she, she made interference um, the other night. She was already, she wasn't far off the leader. Um, going down uh, first time, and then she she stumbled as well, um, uh, following the interference. You know, um, so it, it didn't quite put her out of the race, but she did. She she was left with a lot to do, and the leader wasn't coming back to anyone. You know, so it was a very very good performance. It, it, it was nearly one of the best performances of, of, of the first round, and that's saying something. Yeah. On to the fourth of the heats, Bally Mac Kingdom, the defending champion. We had seen him run so well in the um, English Derby. You know, I alluded to it in his third round defeat where he was fourth. He absolutely tore into the, into the pickup. It was an incredible run in defeat. So coming back to Shelburne Park, I was fully expecting him to take off. As it was, it, it was a good workmanlike display. Bally Mac Juliet actually sort of showed more early zip than them to get into that two or three length lead, but he powers down the far side he stays on strongly I suppose given his frame Declan he's weighing in over 81 pounds it never looks like he's striding out majestically up the home straight in this 750 yard contest some would say you know someone said to me tonight I well he doesn't really stay it well I put it to you he does stay it but he just looks like he's not staying it because you know an 81 pounder his stride is that little bit more ungainly up the home straight after one and a half laps of the circuit yeah if 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 I'm right about this, the first night he ran um, over 750 was in this last year. Against Red Zerardfurt and yeah. Iamza Royale, who went on to be sturdy or just Greyhound of the Year. Right in the yeah. end, yeah. And he was just caught. He was just caught the first night. And you could see he was going to get the trip. It was just, it was no question. The following week, he absolutely uh, got, you know. So, he, of course, he stayed. Um, absolutely. Um I did think there were some very optimistic Irish entries for the English Derby. I have to say, I was surprised <laughs> at some from some leading kennels. I yeah. may also say all the leading kennels had some surprise entries. I thought. I suppose and it's I, when they're going over with numbers. You might as well bring yeah, another one or two. You know? I was proved wrong with every one of them, which shows how much yeah. I know. And this was one of them. But uh, look, he's superb. Uh, he ran well there. Special award there for Bird to Elite. And we're talking about we yeah. only, Bird to Elite has only had a few races. Hasn't been beyond 550 and w- w- was in against the defending champ here. Uh, and I think it was also, uh, you know, it, all the things w- were ag- against him here. And he ran an absolute blinder. And um, the other Barry Mac, Barry Mac Juliet, who, who, who was leading one stage, she ran a fine race in, 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 in third as well. But Barry Mac Kingdom is, is top class. It's hard to believe that people think that she doesn't get the trip. I mean, she's a current Cullen winner, and you, or he is. And, and I mean, you know, this was brilliant. This was just brilliant, you know. And uh, it, it was very good. Forty-one sixty-two from behind didn't get a completely clear run, you know. Thanks to his, his kind of made it as much as anything, and um, very impressive. Yeah, Liam must be very pleased with him. Absolutely. I, I would imagine more than pleased. Um, Barry, Bally Mac Kingdom, we know what a class act he is. Um, you were impressed, I'm sure, but I'm sure you want to talk about Burgess Elite, of course. Yeah, just look, no surprise to see Barry Mac um, in the win that race. I think he won the Shelburne 600 as well, didn't he? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. He, won, he, won, he, won, he won last year's Shelburne 600 this year. So he, he actually <laughs> won it in, in the first or second week of January. And then three or four months later, Liam won it again. Yeah. Or was it? No, it wasn't Liam. Oh, yeah, Liam won it again with Barry Mac Wild. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah look, a great dog. And, and unlucky to be knocked over the English Greyhound Derby, it has to be said. Uh, but yeah, Burgess Elite, obviously I was watching that closely with the, the local connections here in the Oil Shields Glen and, and, and JJ Finley, great supporters of the game. And you know, this was a, a shrewd move, I think, by the connections to step it up because ran a, ran an absolute cracker in the feet, um, as Declan pointed out, um, you know, first first race over an, an extreme distance. And you know, I think there'll be a lot more to come from this ground and uh, certainly looking forward to seeing it in action um, next weekend. So yeah, after nine career starts, I think. Uh, 2854 winner around Shelburne Park. That was uh, its um, sole maiden victory, but uh, an exciting start now over these yeah. kinds of things. They've, um, they, they've, they've, 
they've produced plenty of good stairs in the past, so so they know what one looks like. I'd say they were weren't hesitant about drawing it up into distance. It, if you go back, it's it's back to Borna Dell line. So Borna, there's yeah. Of, yeah, there's plenty of stamina there. And um, Borna yeah. was born at Dell, so no, certainly one to keep an eye on. If it did um, happen to sharpen up a little bit of boxes, could just upset one or two of the bigger names in the week or two to come. Um, we'll we'll see. On to heat five of the current Cullen. On paper, this looked the most wide open of the the five heats. Tinnock Phantom was racing from trap three, had run very well in two five seven five yard contests recently at Shelburne Declan. It looked likely to put its best six bend form behind it. Um, it certainly did that. This, you know, ended up being the easiest winner of the night. She she came away racing. She she led early and she went on to win comfortably. Unlike her half brother who 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 led from the start and got picked up on the line, Boyle Sports Bingo, a half brother out of Glen Lee who has been unbelievably prolific this year. Um, you know, fair play to Liam Curley. His, his breed is certainly doing him proud. But Tinnock Phantom, mighty impressive. A lot to like about this win. Forty one seventy three. Well, um, Glenn Lee must be one of the best blue bitches in, in the country at the moment, but she's a new trick now. She's producing sprinters, which, which I certainly hadn't, I hadn't seen that one coming. Yeah, I think that, that could be the Patsy Sabbath influence now, yeah. of course. You know? uh, that, 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 I haven't seen that one. <laughs> <laughs> Phantom, yeah, brilliant. She's a, a track regular, a very popular tracker, and that, that was a good result. Went down well with, with everyone. She was always in, in front. No, I, hard luck stories, no, but Almighty Paddy did miss the break. You know, which, which, uh, um, you know, even at 750 in Shelburne, especially in Kunku Cullen, you, you, you can't afford to give too, too much of a lead, no. you know. So he ran well, but Tinner Phantom, no, no, no question, very popular winner and a very deserving winner, sure. Yeah, certainly was. Um, she, she's 70 pounds, like she looks every inch of it 70 pounds, oh, yeah, like she's yeah, a big, yeah. she's she a big lady, yeah. but uh, yeah. you know, she can certainly run a bit. Um, almighty Paddy in second, Barry, um, he, he boasts the win over Battle Cry over the trip. Um, that's the, the famous night you're alluding to. I think Battle Cry was two to five. Let's not mention that again, although Almighty Paddy, <laughs> very strong. He can, he can certainly go faster. Yeah, definitely. Um, as Declan pointed out, missed the break and, and ran well in second, but it was really all about um, Tina Phantom bouncing out in front and making all the, the running and that uh, great to see uh, one of these uh, popular winners. We've plenty of popular winners over the course of the weekend. Um, owner trained Michael Devereux, so congratulations. Um, you know, and into the next round. We must mention um, the third place finisher there, which was Stories Lala. Very young, um, only in August. Um, Bally McBulger, out of Bally McBonny, so a TV trophy winner. I, I know she was sort of got a clear enough run in second spot, beaten six and a half lengths, finishes third eventually, but probably better to come from her. Um, Mert Lahey and, and Gavin O'Mahony, Peter McMunn, um, just given her pedigree and, and the fact that she has won over 750 yards in the past, as I said, she's probably one she's, to keep an eye on. Yeah, she's been yeah. experienced as well, yeah. Right, yeah, we'll move we'll, over five to five. Uh, we'll, we'll move back up onto the uh, Shelburne Champion Five Fifty. We'll, we'll glance to this because we have a lot to cover. A lot, a lot happening over the weekend. Um, just the the Cornwall column will continue on Saturday night, of course. And um, there were three to qualify with the three fastest forts. We're left with three semi-finals or three quarterfinals which doesn't sound right in my head, but uh, it'll be four to qualify for two semifinals and then we'll be left with the final six. Plenty of good racing left in this Cornco Cullen. Uh, no point in going into too, too much detail with the draw, but just a lot to look forward to, lads. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And and I think I think the very first seat, isn't, isn't there four potential winners in, in, in the first seat on Saturday night? You have Burgess in one, Bunny Mac Wisdom two, Droopy's Wyatt five, Priceless Jet in six. That's a, that's a fair, that's a fair heat to get, to get going with, you know. Yeah, you, yeah, you'd be pretty happy with that though if you're you're, you're trying to pick pick an open. That'd be a good final. There. That would be a good final. Yeah. yeah, there could be a fair run to the corner on the outside. Although Drewbys Wyatt should expect him to edge in. Whereas Price's Jet might just have the best of the draw. It'd be very interesting to see how close them um, Ballymac Wisdom can turn. Right, the Shelburne Champion Five Fifty gentlemen that kicked off the opening heat. Ballymac Ariel. Um, this lady crossed the line and my Twitter feed exploded. Sort of people sort of tagging me because I think I'm the chairperson of the fan club. Um, she ran well, Declan, but I'm not going to say I was, you know, blown away by her because I think we both know that she's capable of so much better. But she, it was more encouraging, shall we say. She needed this. She had been running well uh, here and she, you know, she didn't run particularly well in the English start. So, I mean, she, she, needed, she needed a win. The, the important thing was that, that she won. 
and <clears throat> excuse me, the course, the um, you know, the, I, I don't know the clock was was, was was that bad. I mean, you know, I would oh, no, listen, Declan, it was the fastest of the heats. Yeah. It, was, it was a good clock, I, but I, I just, I, I, I just feel, I just feel that the same bitch at the back end of last year <clears> probably <throat> would have done twenty nine thirty or better. Um, but it was encouraging, and as we've mentioned earlier on, confidence is a potent, potent weapon in a greyhound, and she'll uh, she'll gain a lot from this. Uh, 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 absolutely, and of course, she, you know, when we saw her, you see, she's running against dogs all, all the time and top class dogs. I mean, you start with it, that's as good as it gets. So, she needed a win to get her confidence back. 2955 is an excellent clock. We've seen Derby finals won in 2955 and, and worse, you know. So, I wouldn't, I, I thought it was top class, uh, um, you know, and it's a decent enough heat. But his best is in the Jack's lock up, is <clears throat> you know, is starting to get his act together. <clears throat> Excuse me, Jack's little thing. Um, seemed lost at Shelburne, should be a lot better next time, you know what I mean, uh, has one sprint trial there, right, but didn't seem to know wh- where he was, that was a good heat and, and she won it, and in the end she won it well Yeah, uh, the one that um, the one that um, the one thing that caught me out about it was her SP, she returned even money, you know, if you <clears> told me six months ago she'd be even money in that type of contest I'd have told you you were losing it you know, at her very best you'd have expected her to be two to five in that sort of race yeah. Oh, well, it, it, it's always current form. That, that's yeah. what you want to be It's current form, you know, and, and she was, uh, you wouldn't say she's under a cloud. I mean, she's been running well in, in top class company, but she wasn't quite what we'd seen, uh, you know, when we saw her first, you know. Um, but as it's all about getting confidence, uh, winning around, she won by six lengths in, in the end, in, in, a, in a good time. I thought it was a top class performance. Yeah. Barry, it'll leave you wanting more. Uh, we, I look forward to seeing her again in action next week. Definitely, look, not much to add. Um, 2055 was an unbelievable run, top class, as Declan said. Uh, even even money was a great price. It was, uh, you know, looking at the race on paper, in fairness, it was a, it was a massive opportunity to get back to winning form. Um, she'll have tougher tests ahead going forward, but uh, great to see her back to winning form. Yeah, moving on to the next heat. I just mentioned Jack's lockup was beaten six lengths in the second. That was one of the outsiders. The party ran well. Jack's little thing uh, just didn't have a look in running, bumped early, but but did stay on well to grab third. And, and Butsy's best probably going through. Um, I have to check the draw there, but I assume he probably went through. It was one of the fastest forts indeed. I, I'd imagine he, he certainly did. It is true, um, yeah. 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 Moving on to the second heat. And here, uh, it, th- there was awful trouble on the opening corner. Thankfully, there was no <clears> nothing <throat> too serious. Navy Blue um, hit the deck, but it wasn't one of these terrible falls it was just sort of a crumple underneath the dog got up and raced on straight away and um, it ended the hopes of stone park leo who had missed the kick was showing a bit of foot into the corner but, but not not quite the same pace we'd have expected to see after his kirby success but he'll come on for the run it's just good to see him running at shelburne park he'll be back very shortly i'm sure as things happened greg's hill was left clear but even though he's the son of woe casey with a 700 yard record at kilkenny just didn't seem to get home declan and um, faded home and fast fit paddy a dog who has some tremendous performances on its card around shelburne park a dog that's attracted an awful lot of potential owners i know because they've all been texting me going what about fast fit paddy what about fast fit paddy i've had to teach one of them that he's not for sale i think that's been the line throughout but he really did stay on stoutly to win this in 3002 it was the slowest heat but you can only win what's there. It was a slowest heat, but it's the most interesting heat. I mean, there were so many stories in in, the, in this one contest. Um, Stone Park Leo obviously was the attraction, and we're all watching. And Mark, in fairness, had done everything right. Brought him up to previous two starters, given him two five two five solos. So he, everything, nothing wrong with preparation. It's just one of those things. He got absolutely clattered. Navy blue. Um, probably came even worse out of it if if, if, if that's possible and Rocky Bay Rocky. so we're left then with Greg Hill who let's not forget had won his first race ever mm-hmm. on Tuesday night two nights yeah, that's true yeah. and here he suddenly <laughs> was winning a heat in the champion stage and he damn near won it and I wouldn't say it was even get to as his first time over 550 he was only caught very very late and caught by a very good dog in fast fit paddy fast fit paddy actually goes up in my estimation because the one fear you would have had is obviously a brilliant dog was that he has to lead or he has to be in front but he, he really proved that he can battle and he can come behind here so he's he's gone up in my estimation there very unlucky on Stone Park Leo and in and on Navy Blue you know they never got a run at all that's Greyhound Racing it, it, it happens you know and uh, they and they'll be back for sure Yeah fast with Paddy um, had he been on your radar prior to the competition Barry he's a couple of good runs to Shelburne yeah, he sure has um, has caught the eye on more than one occasion. No surprise to see um, interest uh, within him 
um, over over the last couple of months. And look, it was the slowest time of the night, but um, I'm sure there's much more to come. And there'll be Declan McDonough and all the lads involved will will be delighted. He's in the next round on Saturday night. It's such a big competition, and uh, I'm sure it's great to be part of it. Yeah, nice dog for Declan to have. He, he he's um he's been bringing up some nice greyhounds to Shelburne Park in recent times, Declan. Very much, very much. Uh, we've a lot of Galway winners recently coming. <laughs> well, yeah. that is, <laughs> no, for that, it's yeah. great to see it, and yeah. we've a lot of Northern winners, and it's it's it, 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 it's fantastic. He's a very good dog, and I can understand why there's interest in him. Absolutely, yeah. 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 And of course, now he also proved that he gets five fifty as well. Is, uh, yeah, I don't think it was ever a doubt he would get really, 50 no, but no. as you say yourself, un- until you see them coming from off the pace, you just don't know if they can do that. Yeah, I, 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 he, I he certainly stays it well enough to, to, to suggest that, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to 5, 5 600 in time. Yes, he he will. Just seems yes, a hard one yeah. 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 On to the third heat, and here Deadly Destroyer was... I thought particularly eye-catching for me, probably the most impressive of the, the five heat winners, Declan. Um, came away well, took a bump, seemed to lose his stride briefly, got racing again, turned second, and I don't know what to make of Romeo Magico, to be honest. I thought he was a potential superstar. Um, disappointed me the other night in terms where I, okay, I thought 550 might just stretch him, but I, I didn't think Deadly Destroyer would get to him quite as easily as he did uh, in the end. Deadly Destroyer winning out a length winner over Romeo Magico. You know, to get me wrong, Romeo Magico was doing twenty nine seventy one. I just thought he'd be doing better with that sort of start, Declan. I think he's a potential winner. Actually, you know, I, I think he, he will come on. He, he'll improve for it. Um, he looks the kind that could keep improving. The winner on a tremendous race, Deadly Destroyer. We know that, he, that he's very, very good. I think they both did well. As you say, 364, uh, uh, um, a length between them. You know, Deadly Destroyer ha- had more work to do. But if Romeo Magico keeps going up like that, you know, he, 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 he's not going to be caught every week, you know. Yeah, I just thought now maybe off the start the deadly story, if he got a clean run in those opening yards, it may well have been upsides Romeo Magico on the corner. Probably would have done a, a 29 40 odd run. I, that, that was sort of my take on it. Barry, what was your take on the race? But I loved um, Deadly Destroyer down in, in San Miguel. I thought he posted some marvellous races, um, even even in defeat there. He was so eye catching. It's great to see Carrie Ram's bottom with a good dog. He's a very popular character, never shy of having having a few words as well. And in fairness, Gary Hannon has has some you know great dogs over the last year or two. And um, this deadly destroyer uh, is going to be a big player for outright glory. And uh, he could be a dark horse uh, for, for the upcoming Irish Greyhound Derby. He's got plenty of pace, and that uh, when he does it right, uh, watch the clock because um, there's a very big run coming over this trip. Yeah, seems he seems made for the five fifty. I think of all the dogs in the competition, he's probably the one that's probably gonna, you know, appreciate the the step up from five two five most. Um Romeo Magical was second, back and third, broke with hope. Uh, Barry, you know plenty about this fellow. That's right, yeah. Um he posted some marvelous performances um around Yall and ran well in the Kirby as well. And uh, you know, great to see him in the next round. He's capable of a better start as well. And uh, you know, wouldn't be your only chance um, next week of um, uh, progress. Once again, a very talented Greyhound for sure. Good. Declan, we'll move on to Heat 4. Um, this was a fine display by Kildallan Pearl. She was running so well in, in recent times. She has a 3107 for 575 yards. So when she absolutely hammered out a trap five, it was pretty, you know, pretty evident from the early yards she was going to play a big part in proceedings. She failed to hold Glenn Quan Pat into the corner. That's no surprise. He has blistering early speed, but Kildallan Pearl was always too close once turning second. Yeah, well, <clears throat> I mean, uh... Glen Graham Pat has been running sprints and superb sprints. Like I would say Glen Graham Pat is among the best sprinters in, in, in the country. And as you say, Kildana had 31.07575. So once she, she got near him, the short band is only going to be one winner. And that was Kildana and Pearl. Uh, they ran well. Ballyknock Merlin ran a nice race uh, coming through for second as well. But yeah, they you know, they not even the winner. David Murray, uh, Kildana and Pearl was, was superb. And, and she is very good. This was a heat where Vallegro would have been one of the fancies. He was a two to one chance. Barry McMurlin was the even money chance. Didn't hit the lids. Um, you know, we we've seen glimpses of what he's capable of. I think he's a dog for the future. I think he's been that for for a couple of months now through the Kirby and even in Tralee, he showed real you know real promise in the semi-finals of the race of champions. But the penny's yet to fully drop with him. When he starts hitting the lids, he's going to be a big player. Vallegro just didn't happen from the other night. Deck and um, trial hadn't been sensational, but just the other night just didn't really get into the race. Found traffic on the corner, and and thereafter it was just a case of just never really got involved. 
Yeah, just just on the night didn't look sharp enough for 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 whatever reason. You can get that in in the first round sometimes. A bit surprised Vanny of Merlin was, was a, a shorter price as it was. To, to to be honest with you, as you say, his progressive dog and will 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 keep improving. But in against pretty experienced, you know. And once a top five seven five dog is up there with the pace, you know, it's a big ask for anything that's in behind, you know, and. Um, so they 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 fail go never got into it as you say a bit of traffic early on just just one of those things if it was running next Saturday night he'd probably run a totally different race you know that's that, it happens it that's in in the sport it happens to them all you know um, an interesting heat um, Glen Quain Pat to me is still a sprinter that's what he you know but although he he's red for 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 every trip really you know and he's versatile which is great. But take nothing with the winner. It, it was a very, very good performance. The top five doesn't reflect how, how good a performance it was. But she would be deep down, you would think, the 575 is, is, is her distance. Yeah, she, she, she's fast everywhere, but she's probably not like razor sharp, top class, pace down the back straight, but she's hammering up the home straight and she can go up well. She She's one of those bitches. She'll probably be sort of a mini open over this type of trip. It's when she goes over 600 yards again that, that she'll probably come. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yes. I mean, she, she, she'll she keep qualifying over, over this, this kind of trip, but over a longer trip, she can take on anyone. Like, 3107 speaks for itself. That, that's yeah. outstanding, yeah. Barry, anything to add to that? Um, you know, Kills Allen Pearl, we, we know she's strong, but you know, she was sharp the other night too. Yeah, she sure was, and that uh, comes from a great line as well with uh, Mags image, her dam, and, and uh, Grand Dam, um, leave me, Mags, the one that she finished brought her up to, which is well in that uh, famous Oaks final 2016. Um, yeah, so look, a fantastic performance. Great to see David Murray with a winner again in Shelburne Park. Road. his magic has delivered some stunning performances over, over the last 18 months or so. So, yeah, um, very nice indeed. Yeah, only a matter of time before David Murray gets his hands on another superstar because he can do a greyhound, Declan. He's top class, and he's a he's his strike rate in Shelburne is is very very good. It's very not off the good. it's not off the ground. They licked it, as you say, Hall of Fame Absolutely. father, yeah. and, still, yeah. and still doing the business himself. In the reading, yeah, for sure, for sure, yeah, yeah. What would Joe? What would Joe Sheehan say now, Barry? <laughs> I leave that to you, Ian. You say it better than me. An ounce of breeding's worth a ton of feeding. <laughs> right, moving on to heat five of the Shelburne Champion Five Fifty. Um, Croker Spirit. He's a nice greyhound. Don't get me wrong, but he's at the moment he's like he's he's the serious talking greyhound. But he's starting to show that it's it's not just talk. Um, he has real good early speed Declan he flew up into the corner his previous start to, to to pip Romeo and fire for the lead on the bend on this occasion you know looked an absolute certain leader up the inside Julie made a, a, a good start went four or five clear holds on by two and a half 29.69 it was a fine display by a young greyhound I just find that people are just getting a bit carried away I think they're expecting too much of this dog too soon I think we should give him time let him develop were you not saying the same thing about the Oaks winner? Just anyway, you're dead, Roy Declan. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, there's something in what you're saying, but at the same time, you said yourself, to lead Romeo on fire to bend, uh, that is serious racing. And also, let's not forget, he's only had six races. Mm. He's only had six races and, and he's won four of them. The talks are outstanding. He was helped a little bit. Because I don't know if people know it, but there was a massive crowding in the middle when the tramps went up there. It just it was unbelievable stuff. And of course, he was on the fence away and gone. So, you know, he he, he was he is top class, 29, 69, 550. He will improve on, on that. Look, he's he's won four from six. And like Susie Stafford, he's done all his racing in Shadow. And that does stand to you come to big finals. You know, it, it's your track basically. You know, and uh, yeah, he, he he's good. This you know, he's in deep here. This is a this is a hot competition, but he's every right to be there, and he is one one the ones to beat definitely. Um, he's he's now won three to, or four times. Three of them came from trap one, Declan. The other from oh yeah, two. Um, is he going to be draw dependent? Do you think? We know. On, I think he's in three on Saturday. You know, uh, so we, we we'll find out. But he he likes he likes so many dogs in racing. He he just loves the inside, getting to the inside. I think it's a fair question you're asking because a lot depends. We, we see with some Pat Buckley's dogs as well. It's whether they go straight in or whether they're smart enough to wait until they get and, the chance and then, go. And then move in. Yeah. And he, we won't ask. And even next Saturday, you know, he might need a bit of experience to actually learn that because he, he is a novice. He's very much a novice. He only has six races. You know what I mean? But um, he he's a good dog. 
for sure. Yeah, he is. Um, Barry, a lot to like about him. Um, we'll get to the runner-up and the third as well in a moment because they're two pretty fast greyhounds also. But uh, Croker Spirit, you, you've been more than aware of this fellow, I'm sure, for a few weeks now. Yeah, look, a very exciting talent. He actually caught my eye the night. Um, I, I, I was following um, Broadstrand Ryan. He finished third, and I thought he was a real eye catcher in the feet on that occasion. And uh, I rate uh, Broad, Broadstrand Ryan um, quite highly. Um, I think there'll be more to come from him going forward. But Croker's spirit, like to, to be running in that company and doing what he's doing after just six races, just tells you how good he is. You know, the Irish Ground Derby, um, he, he'll be another leading player. Um, for that, for sure, because um, there's going to be plenty more to come from his likely race. He's a young greyhound, and uh, the world, the world is his oyster. Yeah, out in Trap Six Stories, Pee Wee, um, Declan, he's actually, you know, almost as likely race. It was only his seventh career start. He's very strong. He's that 31 10 for the 575. Um, he ran on stoutly the other night. I think there's still far better to come from this greyhound. He's, a, he's an exciting type for Mertlahi and Gavin O'Mahony. He is, very, and, and I cannot be very much informed. Um, yes, he is. I would think, to my eyes, he's a middle distance, an open class middle distance dog, you know. But yeah, he, he, he ran well the night against a very, very impressive fast winner who got everything his own way. So it was a very good performance. Yeah, he, for sure, it was a good performance. Uh, Barry Mac, Bellevolt, I didn't know an awful lot about, but certainly ran a nice race in third. Um, yeah, he's, so, he's yeah. very, very strong, but he's very, he's mad for the fence, Barry, isn't he? Yeah, he sure is. Um, we see him in the, the Kirby and the um, race of champions where he ran well um, in that competition, staying on well. A greyhound that will um, appreciate uh, it's a 600 plus uh, going forward. You never know, we could even see him in the current Cool Colin um, next year. But uh, great performances from the second and third. Mert Lahey's greyhound would run so well against great name that um, last time. I was great to see um, Mert and Gavin with a, a great greyhound, Mert, uh, another popular character as well. Um, yeah. likes, to, like, likes to wind me up now, does Mark? Um, I've got one or two phone calls in the past, from, but look, no, 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 I know exactly what I'm dealing with, so I look, that won't work. That <laughs> well, won't, that well, won't he, work again. If, if, he, if he does <laughs> ring you again, just there is actually a dog in the kennel named after him now. Um, he's a dog called Chicken Legs. You can just put that oh, to yeah. him, all right. Did he, did he, uh, did he win for the night? No, or did he, win um, he won, he won, he won recently, he won recently, yeah, yeah, um, recently, yeah. Lads, another great competition to look forward to on Saturday night. Again, three to qualify, three fastest sports. We'll, we'll move on because we still have a fair bit of ground to cover. Barry, we only have ch- a chance to really sort of glance over a bit of the action in provincial because we do want to mention the English Derby. Uh, the, way, the widest Fitzgibbon uh, Pharmacy Treaty Cup was won uh, by, you know, the Flaherty-owned um, Mill, oh, Millrose... Millrose Melody, was it? Millrose Melody, yeah. yeah. She, <clears throat> um, she, she was a big prize. But there was nothing lucky about her victory. She absolutely flashed out. She held the she held the fast greyhounds into the corner and then kicked on again when, when they just couldn't get around her and um, really stayed on well to the line. A fine display and, by all accounts, a very popular winner. Yeah, without a doubt. I was speaking to um, Keen Rafferty um, yesterday on Facebook, just sent him a message to congratulate him. And uh, he was telling me that um, he's deeply involved um, with, the, with the training at home. I, mean, I think it's a, it's a real big family um, kind of organisation, they all play a part in it. They've, um, you know, really, really great home people, passionate people, a uh, small kennel, and great to win such a, a popular event at, at the Limit Greyhound track and beating the likes of Shane Renate and Skylight Blake. It was a real, real special win, and uh, I, I'm sure they've been celebrating over, over the last uh, couple of days. Um, you know, loads of stuff on social media and Twitter and, and um, Facebook congratulating them. And it's great to see, you know, like when it means so much to, to win. Um, such a big event I think that just you know makes it um, extra special for people so look um, huge congratulations and uh, looking forward to seeing that um, star tracker in action again over the coming weeks yeah, 18s, um, 18s, big pardon, 1868 uh, from the front, flashing out of boxes. That'll win plenty of sprints. And uh, Michael Rafferty spoke very well afterwards in talking to Hugs TV. You know, apart from talking about their own dog and whatnot, he thanked everybody at Limerick Track, thanks the sponsors, th- thanked the ground staff. That, that, that means a lot to people. It sure does. And um, we heard Michael on, on a recent podcast as well um, with Rory Burke. So he, he's very talented um, as well. But uh, great, for, great for the family and that. Uh, well done to all involved. Yeah, I wonder will they go to Dundalk with them, or or will they will they, will they look for for mm-hmm. similar enough prizes down down the country? Um, we'll we'll find out in the future. But Milrose Melody certainly a sprinter to keep an eye on. Um, at Curraheen Park on Saturday night, Barrow, we saw another pretty sensational display by the Dramana Bucco dog. He's um he's pretty special. I don't know if I want to see him in trap one all that often, but 
it was emphatic. Yeah, look, as as we said last week, it was great to see him, I suppose, confirm um, that promise and ability he had shown in trials and justify that big price tag as well. Um, obviously, it was a, a great payday for, for All Connected and you know, great for young Greyhound trainer Garrod O'Brien to produce a Greyhound of, of this um, standard. And I was actually writing a piece for, for the Echo in Cork on, on, on Friday, looking ahead to the, the race on Saturday night. And, you know, I think he won 28-22 in the first round. And it's quite strange to be to be saying he, he can actually go fast, go, go faster. And to do um, 27-93, was it? Or 27-97? 27-93, yeah. 27-93. And he can go faster again. It's just scary stuff. I've been um, showing and, and watching that winning performance Um you know, time and time again to, to people over over the last year or so there. Uh, so I have it up on Facebook as well. And loads of likes and comments. People just love to see um such a, a classy and classy ground to produce that kind of a run in their second career out. He's an August puppy. Um I think it's what Curry and Park needed. We we have a, a, a new star, I think. Um a son of Sparta Maestro. Um reminds me of Rocky Bay Foley with his his style of running. Um, flashed out the other night, 325 section and 1591 um, up towards the third corner. Um, I'm looking, I definitely won't be missing Curry Park next Saturday night. I, 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 um, I, I, I don't want to dampen your parade now, Barry, but don't get used to stealing him down there because he's every inch of Shelburne Park dog. It might be his last start in Curry <laughs> for quite some time. Ah, well, <laughs> this sort ah, of well, Sparta well, Maestro well, looks absolutely tailor made for 550 yards of Shelburne Park. Declan, did you catch him, Dramana Book, the other night? 27 I didn't, I didn't no, uh, sorry. Saturday night, Chevron was just wall to wall, and we didn't start me as well. So I, I have to catch up on, on, on all that stuff, but he seems to be a pretty good dog, all right? Don't worry, is don't, worry, don't worry, Jackson. We'll see plenty of him in Shelburne Park. Okay, I'm not sure Barry will see too much of him. We'll yeah. see plenty of him. Have no doubt about that. Uh, the other heat wasn't too slow either, Barry. At uh, 2849 for the second week running for the Droopy's Dorado dog. He's, you know, in, in a normal circumstance, you'd be going around. He's a really nice type. He's, you know, he's just gone two years of age, and he's after winning his first two starts in 2849. And yet he's eclipsed by what are we talking? Fifty odd spots. You know, you're, you're talking. He's something's gone eight lengths faster than him. Yeah, I know. Yeah, but like that was a great performance as well. And, and especially when you do it in trap number six around Carlyle Park, it can be a, a disadvantage at times. And I think you can take about twenty spots off that. Um, so definitely an exciting talent going forward for for the Dumpies and uh, trainer Fraser Black. Lovely. Listen, there was a, a little bit of racing across the water on, on Saturday night also. Um, we'll, I, I just mentioned that the um, the plate, the sensational performances by the Irish three of the four heat winners, Peter Cronin with a fantastic double, both Angry Dad and Angry Tornado winning in fine style. Angry Tornado set the standard with a 29-13 run. Bombardier came home fast to land the spoils for Pat Buckley in the opening heat. Um, the Angry Dad dog had to run a great bend to get the better of Glengar Bale. They had a great tussle. The Irish are one, two, three, four, I think maybe even five in the market for the uh, the plate, which is great to see. But the real action was in the English Derby itself. Three out of the four heat winners, both Sydney and Sid obliged. Dear Jet Sydney, the opening heat, knockable Sid in the final heat. Gate time Milo was Ireland's other winner, but we have eight qualifiers, some brilliant performances, some desperately lucky. Your heart has to go out to unlock, unlock, and all about Ted because they were right there in the pitch with a perfect position to qualify and just early traffic cost them. But Declan, all in all, it's been a hugely successful English Derby. Hopefully, we can put it to rest now in a couple of weeks time and and and, and land our fourth in a row yeah i it, but it it, it, <clears throat> it, it it's it's no formality in you know there, there's some serious home dogs in it um Bocco's belly missed the kick the other night and that's i thought he was he, he'd be gone but he wasn't he, he, he's still very much there and if he should get to the final and, and, and lead yeah then then he, he he's a serious player but we have a very strong team in it dear just sydney is running incredibly well uh unbeaten a, a toaster i believe you know and to win a derby two years in a row, I mean, have we ever seen it? It's a very, very rare, rare thing indeed, you know? Well, we, we've only seen it once in Shelburne. Um, it's happened four times in the UK. You know, Mick the Miller was the first, Patricia's Hope, um, Rapid Ranger, and of course, another dog you might have heard of, Westmead Hawk. But, um, you know, it's happened more often in England, but it's never happened that they win at two different tracks. But that's that's the thing, yeah. And and, and no, he, he he's been very good. Right, he's a fair battle now next next Saturday night along the inside. Barry McWild in two, Toonmaker Sydney in three. 
Um, Barry McFair one has, has is very good for one to one experience, but he, he's a job to do there, you know. Beach Avenue and six. Now, how Beach Avenue qualified last Saturday? Unbelievable. Absolutely. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Even because he's still, if you actually look in behind, he's still <laughs> bumping with the machine off the last bend in fifth. And he makes up about six lengths to qualify. Like he was literally out of his picture. He, he, he wasn't <laughs> there at all, you know. And, and and he qualifies. So he's a fantastic dog, but he's the same problem in, in Toaster. He has in Shelburne. He just can't not break, you know. And uh, anyway, but he is a wide seed. He has trapped six again, but it's a, it's a tough heat. He, he, his best chance is the one to the inside will, you know, battle with each other. And something has to give in, in there. But Dear Jet Sydney, what we've seen so far is machine-like. Absolutely, you know. Um, the other is semi, I don't know what to make of that. That's uh, not to go citizen four, gay time Milo and five. But I can tell you, everyone in Shadborn once gay time Milo went in front, knew that he was over because he's a serious five seven five dog. And similarly, if, if he gets to the final and leads, then it is it, it is over because n- nothing will, will come from behind him. I wouldn't think even Beach Avenue. Um, second semi final, dog, but I would think Buckwell's belly probably will be better this time. So he, he, he's a danger. I think we'll have an Irish winner, but which one it will be? That's, that's another matter of entirely. That's the million dollar question. Yeah, for sure. Barry, Barry you were taken by the displays. I sure was. And, you know, you're talking about even grounds in the feet there, Beach Avenue. I really hope that makes the final as well for the Heelys there. Um, you know, great great people as well. And they're getting a, a, a savage kick out of Beach Avenue over the last year or so. It's a fairy tale stuff. Um, obviously, I was singing the praises of, of Kappa White Trainer Pat Buckley on, on Tip FM um, Friday evening. So great to see you there, Jeff Sydney, and, and Knock the Bull sit. Um, both win their respective heats. Um, two great performances. Um, you know, Knock the Bull sit, we see what he could do in Shelburne Park with all them fast starters. And, you know, he's really at the top of his game now um, at this present moment, and uh, he's going to take plenty of stop in the competition. But obviously, with. Um, they're just Sydney's the oil connections and, and breeder in Neil again. I'd, I'd be favouring that one. But look, all to play for um, on Saturday night. And in terms of an Irish winner, um, Ian, I, I think um, you're, you're safe at the moment. <laughs> Listen, if I'm safe, <laughs> I'm safe. If I'm not, I'm not. Was it ever in doubt? Was it yeah. ever in doubt? Was it ever in doubt? Not in my mind. Uh, it's one to seven at the moment, an Irish winner. Um, just the other the other heat winner was Thorne Falcon, who, of course, started his career at Enniscorthy in the future champion and Michael Fortune Memorial. I think he'd have got a kick out of that. Um, he's a fast greyhound. I just have to mention Georgie Roach after the first round of the of the unraced stake down at Enniscorthy. He said, ah, but for the Wexford dog, that's JT Wexford. I'm not sure there's much in it. And here we are, Thorne Falcon, his third favourite to winning this derby. Keep up the good work, Georgie. Keep up the good work. <laughs> uh, who actually, Georgie also actually provided one of the semi-finalists the other night and was probably the fly in the ointment to Bocco's belly. He charged up the inside of his kennel companion and gave him a bump, but Bocco's belly, I thought, ran an incredible race. Declan alluded to it. Showed unbelievable pace and he certainly appeared player i don't think he's this lightning fast starter that some seem to assess he is he's very strong um i'd love to see him over the 575 around romford but i think we're there we have a great chance and i think we'll we might just do the english derby and place double again now that would be nice and uh, we'd be crowing for another 12 months i said four <laughs> wins in a row of course three wins in a row i think it's four in four uh, six years if we've managed to win it of course JT Jet won the last at Wimbledon and then of course we've seen Prices Blake and last year Dear Jet Sydney so it'd be nice to have a fourth in six years gentlemen it's been a pleasure as always what are you looking forward to most of the weekend Declan there's uh, plenty to choose from the f- <coughs> excuse me the first heat of the Conquer column it, it is uh, it, as I say it's worthy of a final there is four dogs and the birdest dog just might have been a surprise yeah, I'm sure Barry's going to give the English Derby a mention, but I have no doubt that what he's looking forward to most is the final of the uh, the unraced stake down at Curraheen Park, which just so happens to be live on Talking Dogs TV. The uh, This season ends on J- July 3rd, Saturday night, and it just, uh, I'm sure Barry's delighted at the fact that it's it's going to be Curraheen Park on. Yeah, look, that will be um, extremely popular. Um, people love to see these on race stakes, so I'm sure it'll have a very big audience um, as always. And yeah, look, excited to see Jermaine Abrocco um, in action um, in the fresh on Saturday night. And, uh, you know, his uh, breeder as well, Eamon Uniac, um, is getting, you know, uh, great satisfaction out of this. So well done to him as well, because the, the breeders people are, are, are really important people to our industry here in Ireland. And, um, you know, great, great to see Eamon as well um, enjoying the performance of Jermaine Abrocco. Just going back to um, Chan Mellon Friday night, great to be there. 
um, some really lovely people down in Clanmail enjoying a great night's racing. Yeah. A couple of them were enjoying the, the points that were available. They were sitting out um, and, and enjoying their couple of points. And just in terms of the racing on Friday night, um, Lisnick Hill, Vernon, is a great hunt, I'm sure. And um, you'll be seeing in Shelburne Park soon, trained uh, by Dick and Vernon. I think that's four wins now from five career outings. And he's owned by Michael O'Keefe, who was um, celebrating that win on Friday night. So well done. Great. Well said. Yeah, we, we, we always try to give the breeders as much dimension as we can. Certainly in the big nights uh, when the final comes in, it's always nice to throw in the breeders' name and details because without them, well, we'll be fairly lost. Gentlemen, thanks again. We will talk to you yeah. very soon. We have a great weekend's racing to look forward to. We have the second round of the Cronk Call and the second round of the Shelburne Champion 550. We have the final of the Dennis Linhan Solicitors Open on Race Day down at Curraheen Park and, you know, featuring a couple of really talented types. And of course, there is proceedings across the water at Toaster. Hopefully Ireland will continue to do the business. It'd be nice to have six finalists. It'd be nice to have five finalists. But you know what? <laughs> if we had four, that'd do me. Listen, folks, thanks for talking to us. Best of luck and we'll see you very soon. Cheers, That's it for us on Talking Dogs on a Monday.